what is actually happening in us from moment to moment when we interact with the world and the people in it? Do we really know? Are we actually paying close attention? And if not, what consequences might that have for ourselves and for our relationships? I think most of us live our emotional lives in a very controlled manner, never really close to embodying our full expression. Living in a world with ever-increasing complexity, we try our best to control many aspects of our lives, because we think control equals safety, right? And so many of us try to not really feel our feelings. We try not to express ourselves fully, often because we worry that it might not be well received. Shh, our parents said, don't cry, don't be angry, don't take up too much space. And they probably did it with the best intent, trying to help us fit into a society that largely rewards those who keep their emotions somewhat suppressed. But in the process, we became conditioned to a degree where we lost ourselves a bit when we turned our backs on a big part of our humanness. And so now most communication happens between one tip of an iceberg to another tip of an iceberg. At least I found all this to be the case for myself. And I fully realized this when I found a practice that at its core is about paying attention to that part of the iceberg that's below water, as well as the part above it the full vastness of our inner emotional landscape and about exploring what happens when we welcome in our full emotional experience and discover and align ourselves with our truth in the moment or said in simpler terms a practice that helps us become more conscious why are we sometimes in awe or experience of rapture or something when we see a dancer you know, someone who's just moving so well and expressing so well. Or even like someone who doesn't say many words, but we walk in the room and you're like, whoa, who's that? There's just something about them. Why when like someone does like the wedding speech, you're just like, you can't wait to hear the next word. And then the next person does it and you, you like can't wait for them to finish. I think what's happening there in communication the person you're listening to is actually more aligned with their subtle energy, their emotional experience, and, and your emotions are just so intuitively connected to your truth and what matters to you and your connection to other people. That's what that information is. Someone who's connected to that and they speak, it's like, ah, like it draws you in. You know, that person's connected to the force, which is a, a kind of analogy for they really experience their full range of experience. So they're connected to the full information or a fuller information in them than maybe most people are. So they're very charismatic or they're, they're very easy to notice. And becoming more conscious of how you're being impacted, discovering your truth. And encircling, I think that's one thing that it's kind of developed from the practice because we're practicing developing our capacity to be able to notice what's happening in us especially when we're in connection with someone else and practicing aligning ourselves to what it is we're really experiencing and seeing if we can talk or embody in real alignment like right now what am i really feeling does it feel connected to the words i'm saying it's only in the more recent years that I started paying attention to my feelings in this way and started contemplating where I was speaking from moment to moment. And that way of being in the world really took off when I joined 15 other souls on a six month journey into greater consciousness. A journey that for me seemed to direct me back to a more natural state of being. A state of being that I knew as a child before the conditioning set in. Some people even describe uh, this process of becoming more conscious again as a kind of second innocence. Because when you do it, you can actually touch almost like a childlike sense of yourself. 
And that's often what people experience when they start circling. A few years back, I met one of the co-founders of Circling Europe in Thailand. This was my first time hearing about the modality or the practice of circling. Fast forward a few years and I found myself in Sweden, enrolled in the SAS, Circling Europe's six month long leadership training. The deal we made was that I received the training and in exchange I would make a film about circling. So the following is my attempt at portraying and trying to capture a bit of the essence of a practice that ended up changing my life in many ways. The CES is a leadership training designed to teach people to lead circling. And for those that are willing to put in the work, it's a powerful developmental adventure, a hero's journey into self-leadership and in many ways a journey home to ourselves. When I sat down for the opening circle of my first weekend on the SES training, it was actually my first experience with circling. I had done a little bit of research online, but to be honest, that just confused me a bit more. And when I sat down and nobody actually said a word for the first 10 minutes, well, I knew that this journey was going to be interesting. I'm wondering if there's anyone who would like to share something. <laughs> 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 it makes me think of my first circle in the my in my first SES. Just the space I came into was so liberating for me. Oh yeah, like there's a place where you don't have to chit chat before the training starts. Well, some people were on their own and others were doing yoga, acrobatic stuff and others were just sitting in silence. Yeah, seeing myself in groups like coming somewhere in and then, like the idea that I need to do something to make sure I fit in or feel comfortable. <laughs> and then the first, when, when everybody sat down, there was just silence and People checking in with themselves, eyes closed or open, people looking around and and that that really struck me and I started crying. Like ah, ah like oh there's there's actually a, a, a place where people want this <laughs> and come to look for it. Just where there's nothing you need to do but there is an intention of hey i want to be present here with myself and with others and and see what that's like it's like i just start crying and i, I said that i felt at home and that i didn't expect that to happen <laughs> that even that expression <laughs> surprised me that that came up I wouldn't say that I immediately felt at home, but I realized quickly that this practice was about slowing down and taking time to really connect to oneself and to the others. And that a central question in the practice is, what is it like to be you right now? I can feel like when you pose the question that there is this feeling of, of getting touched or of like a cry in the throat. And like a longing. Yeah, I'm feeling good. I'm a bit surprised sitting here actually. I wasn't um, planning to to be filmed around this, so yeah. And normally when I make a film and make interviews, I coach people. 
I try to make them feel safe so they can be the best versions of themselves on camera. But this was very different. What I found when I sat down and started interviewing my fellow travelers on this journey home is that when I asked this question, the honest curiosity and the willingness behind it to be with the person in their world actually made circling happen on camera. Actually allowing and just going with what was there between us in the moment, something more true and natural seemed to emerge. I get excited by that because it's so much of what the practice is about is, is that it's kind of possible at any time, any situation. I like the question. <laughs> mm. I feel a bit exposed with the camera, like being aware that the thing is there. There is something joyous about it too. I feel the feeling of being exposed and then um, being more conscious about myself and it brings joy. <laughs> well, how would this be on the on film, is this going to be showed? Who will watch this? What would they think? Yeah, some kind of self-consciousness <laughs> around that. It's like I'm reminding myself I can, I can be relaxed. Don't have to do something, but there's a part of me is a little, like, as if I've got to perform or something. So right now I'm in this like, what is what is this interaction about? What is it that I'm uh, doing here? Uh, am I supposed to say something interesting? I feel a little bit of like um, the vulnerability of can I speak clearly? Can I say you know what I'm really passionate about in a clear way? But yeah, it's also quite nice to feel that. And to be honest. This felt super liberating to me. That we could just be, yeah, honest and authentic with each other. Leaving the polished and somewhat fake facade of the normal interview format and just being with what was actually there between us and being present with the person I was with. And I know why it felt so good. I think deep down we are yearning for authenticity in others as well as in ourselves. The opportunity to see the other exactly as they are in this moment and to share ourselves in the same manner, even when that feels vulnerable. And I think a part of us are also yearning for the courage to let ourselves be seen fully in our vulnerability with warts and all. Nervousness, heart beating in my throat. Some tiredness. But now, as I put words to tiredness, I feel more. It comes a little bit of joy. Like I'm relaxing into the tiredness, that it's okay to be tired and not resist it somehow. Lots of energy. Lots of, lots of joy. <laughs> lots of eagerness. I'm really inspired. It feels like touching upon a practice that is very, very important to me. It's like the longing for the, for the kind of connection to myself and to the world that, I, that I've experienced so much in circling. And in showing our vulnerability like this, opening those doors that we fear to look through and the trust that there's no such thing as bad emotions that should be avoided. In my experience, then we're faced with all the potential that is awaiting us on the other side. What I just realized is it's so familiar to me now, being with this kind of sensation that I may have called nervousness in a past life, but uh, it's more like a, a life force that actually I have learned to trust. When I sense deeper right, right now, there's quite deep trust. It's just like, yeah, it's fine. Nothing can go wrong. Doing this training and making a film at the same time required me to open a few of those doors of fear. So had you asked me what it was like to be me during those six months, 
would have sounded something like this. I feel overwhelmed, worried and even a bit angry. Because this cannot be done. Either I do the training or I do a film about it. Thinking I can do both all by myself is straight up hubris. But feeling this resistance to the project really got me in contact with that side of me that wants to explain myself before showing up in the world. The perfectionist that worries how this will be perceived and wants you, the viewer, to know that of course I couldn't be fully present in both these processes and that I'm obviously therefore the wrong person to portray this practice and the film therefore will be shit. In short, I found all the places where I had put barriers up between me and my sense of worth, my self-love. And so the film project turned out to be, as it so often does, the blessing in disguise that would provide me with never-ending material for my own hero's journey back to myself. Just start to notice how it is to be with Matthias. And we're going to get to spend some time to be with him now, to really witness what it's like to be him, to try to see him, and to share how we're impacted by him in service of connecting with him. So at this point, I hope you are a little curious. I know I was. The way we were being together felt true on a very deep level of my being. But I still didn't really understand the practice. And it seemed I wasn't entirely alone in that regard. So what is circling? Yeah. One minute. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. That is more difficult one. What, 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 what the fuck is circling? What, what is it? <laughs> It probably depends what, which day you ask me. <laughs> I think the more I've been circling, the more I realize that I don't really... It's hard for me to frame it. There's quite a lot of people who do circling that will say it's really hard to write or speak about what circling is. You like, it's much easier to experience it. But then recently I'm like, maybe that's not always the truth. Because it is so hard to explain somehow and, at, and in some sense it's super simple it's just like well just be present with everything in every moment i think the first thing i'd say is circling is a practice so if you go somewhere to circle you're going to go into a room with people and you you're practicing a kind of communication or a kind of, it's a, a meditation actually in relationship. On the one side it's a very mysterious thing that all of us who have done it the most are still kind of trying to discover and are kind of in wonder of what it is. And then also it's, it's a, a practice of bringing a deep presence to connections and supporting people to reveal themselves where they are and to see other people where they are very clearly and to kind of rest in the truth of where we are together. So what will often happen is you'll, you'll be in a room with people and a leader and what you're going to practice is can you pay more attention to what it's really like for you to be with this other person and it might be someone you don't even know and a leader will guide you into like how you can get more skillful at not only discovering what's there for you but communicating it so it's clear existential sadness and not like um... Anger and sadness, like we're all gonna die, every relationship is gonna break, and like, oh fuck, I don't want to. Uh, 
Awesome. It's nice to hear someone. I feel alive. It's like sorrow and anger. Depression. It's kind of sweet feeling. I feel grounded and like touch in my core. Gratitude towards life. Also, this <clears throat> like a smash a glass or something like that. <sighs> and it's unfolding in an organic way. Uh, so there's no turn taking, and it's up to each one to sense when to act, when to speak, when to move. It includes words as well as gestures, bodily movements. It can involve touch. It involves hearing each other and listening deeply to others and trying to be humble about not maybe perhaps knowing the other person's experience. And in that way, the purpose is to, to stay more truthful to what happens in the moment. And that's it. So it feels like digging in under the layers of what I've been taught to experience from whatever context that, I'm gr that I've grown up in and allowing the uncomfortableness and the awkwardness of actually being with what it is like right now. But also this other cool part, which is you're also learning and, and developing how to pay attention to another person and to pay attention or to connect in a way that that person feels actually invited to be more of themselves and to experience more of themselves. You can't be alive. Someone's dying. Who's dying? We are aware of 5% of what's happening in us. And then in everyday conversations, we bring maybe 5% from that 5%. <laughs> Then in Circling we play around, okay, how to actually fully bring those 5% of which we are aware. And we sometimes open the door for that part of the iceberg, which is still under the water, for that actually unconscious part. I want to be a boss in a company or something. And... <laughs> I want to be black. No, no. It's really... <laughs> what happens now? <laughs> mm, I don't know, it's like cut the crap and just do what's meaningful and be real and just like want big people to wake up from the trance or something. Want to have power? Yeah, power too make people present like here. Often people aren't aware of uh, what they're really communicating under their words. And in circling we get to really like open up what's there, which can be a scary process. If we're suddenly looking at something in more detail that's very personal, that we're not used to having explored. But the way that we explore in circling is from a very open, curious, kind of in wonder of being, in wonder of life and in um, respect of what's here. My own first couple of circles were quite intense for me. I didn't really bring myself fully because so much was going on inside me. So many questions were coming to the surface. Like, what are we actually doing? What are all these feelings I'm suddenly in contact with? Why am I not joining in? Why am I judging myself for not joining in? How does one even participate in this? This is actually leading anywhere and probably the biggest of them all. Why are we doing this? What is the hope on behalf of the participants? That they become more liberated, that they become more free and more open and more loving and more empowered. 
more alive, more ready to kind of live their life to the full and express their gifts. And enjoying aliveness, because it seems to me that a lot of people are scared of aliveness. I usually feel the most alive when I'm like touching my edges and I've learned to enjoy that more and more. Like an eagle in the sky When my time has come When I meet people in a circling space for the first time that that is quite scary for, for many people. This like, what is going on? It's like, I'm feeling much, and it's like, that's uncomfortable. And then learning to appreciate that. Becoming more myself. So again, that's one of those things you often hear. And I think that's just a way of describing like, becoming more aligned to the depth of you and be more connected to what it is you're experiencing. Your, like your, your felt sense, your emotional sense, your thinking isn't, isn't contradicted. So to be authentic means to be even more in touch with and able to feel yourself. And you have to have actually a courage and a curiosity about what's really here. Yeah, it feels like the practice mainly helps reveal the ways that we're in our own way or where we're carrying things we don't need to carry anymore and scared of things we don't need to be scared of anymore or yeah, builds our courage to, to be more fully ourselves in the world and live a fuller life. A big realization I had quite quickly is that we're all dealing with a lot of the same issues. Our stories and the traumas that have created them might be different, but our core challenges as humans are so connected. We want validation. We want to know that we're okay. We want love. And this theme also came up quite quickly in my group, disguised in its own unique way. The attraction to circling is, is for me, I think that I'm allowed to be myself. How can I be more myself? And am I allowed, am I allowed to do that? Almost everybody I know is looking for that. I had a coaching uh, conversation like a few weeks ago where that question of, am I allowed to be me? Am I allowed to be here? Uh, came up. And then like my immediate response was like, yeah, who is going to allow you to do that? And I was just like, we, we both laughed because it's like, it's so obvious, right? That it's like, of course it's me. I'm the one, I'm the only one who can give myself permission to, to be myself. And then still it seems like so many people, including myself, navigate as if someone else needs to give me permission to be here and to be me. And it's such a core theme in circling. And it's a space where I can connect to people in a way where I don't have to neglect myself. Where I can practice coming in from where I'm really at meeting you from where you're really at without having to please the other too much. Coming out of habits that are, for me, have been looking at what others need or what's happening out there. Somehow it's a good way of interrupting the kind of habitual, defensive kind of ways of being we, we all learn through life. A lot of the time I notice in myself what I'm saying to the other person in front of me is, is not what's actually going on in me. I'm saying something else. I'm trying to accommodate or, or please them in, or, or, or something. Thinking about all the other people involved, their needs and kind of losing my, my clarity and then maybe more following other people's emotions or needs and, and rather handling them you know, handling the situation than actually being in it. 
I notice um, some kind of fear inside of me, like I don't want to hurt you or be scary or like I, I want to make myself a bit small but available, like I don't want to disturb you somehow. contract on that when I hear you this impulse of feeling the need to make yourself smaller in order to be with me it's a reminder about some wound which I have in me in relations um, noticing your eyes look a bit different now when you're talking with me I'm curious what's happening right now. I'm getting confused with how much do I trust things which I say? How much is acting out? How are you with the distance? There's something about the, you, know, you being di- a certain distance away from us that keeps standing out to me. And it, it's really visible. And I wonder how it, how it is for you. Yeah, I feel it's far away. Uh, being closer right now wouldn't feel really natural. I relax knowing that. There's two sides to it. At its best, it's like it's like discovering whole new realms of life that are just better. It's like going from black and white to colour in certain ways, and you didn't know that there was colour available. And like once you've seen that colour, it's like, oh my god, I've been in black and white all this time. There's a real truth in that. And there's also a real truth in, like, we don't escape any of the human archetypal struggles. And yet, for myself, I just feel so much more loving, so much more self-accepting, so much more appreciative of others, so much more kind of in wonder of life from having done the practice quite a bit. Like, that's just way more available for me now, and the practice supports that. But it's it's not an easy process. It's It's like a unlearning, deconstructive process that can rock our world and, and be super scary at times and open us up to the unknown in ways that we're not uh, typically kind of in contact with. Yeah, it feels like taking the roof off, like there's normally a, a corridor or something that we live our life in and this takes the roof off and then there's like, oh. and that doesn't give a concrete answer of what to do next. But it has a serious impact. Okay, so it all sounded quite simple to me at this point. You sit down with a bunch of people, you notice what goes on in you and try to communicate that with authenticity. And through that, you learn to be more of yourself and you learn to be a better listener and maybe even more allowing of other people's experiences. But obviously, it's not always that easy. And luckily, the practice has quite a few tools to help you on that journey. So in the next episode, it's time for a deeper cut. Cut.